I'm David Miller. I'm Director of Learning for Coato Studios, which is a tech startup based in Shoreditch, and we make educational games um, for ages five right through to undergraduate level university. I think what was interesting was the whole idea of the automized, aut automating of learning. And, and what we think is that if you create the right game environment, then children are able to self-direct their own learning within the landscape of the game. So it's not necessarily important for teachers to become expert in what they're teaching or what the kids are learning, but so long as the teachers are able to leverage the game environment to, to, to prompt the correct discussion, then the kids can actually learn a lot just from playing the game and going through the different levels. Yeah, so for example, so we have a, a game called Hakitsu which teaches children the rudiments of JavaScript. And what we do is we offered 100 hours of code, kind of leading on from the hour of code that was started with in the, in the US. And what we do is we go into the school and we take one or two of our programmers and we go in and we introduce the kids to the app. Now the teachers have never seen the app before, but what we discover is that the children in learning how to play, the teachers become co-learners and it's a really amazing stimulating sort of synergy that happens because the teacher this is, doesn't necessarily know JavaScript or even any particular computer language. This is particularly true in primary schools. And well, I think so long as the game allows for creativity, because really learning has to be a creative act. You know, the only way you properly learn something is if you can take the learning and then use that learning to create something else. So I think that's where great teaching can still happen, because the teacher in you know, in fostering this learning and the kids playing the game, if they, if they can then take that learning and create something new, but either within the classroom or out with the classroom, that's where we think the proper learning has happened. Well, it's quite interesting. There's lots. Ideally, there's lots of talk of the flipped classroom, and Lord Knight made the point about spending more money and bringing access Wi-Fi access so that people aren't necessarily having to travel to somewhere that they can actually create and learn in the comfort of their own home. So, really, I mean, I still see learning and teaching as, a, as an essentially human activity. You know, it's it's wonderful for a teacher to see the whites of the eyes of the children and the teacher knows when a kid has got something right um, but I can see how in, in future years, five, ten years time, that a lot of learning is going to be happening at home and when children attend school it will be more for teachers to, to be acting as guides and questioners and discussion prompters, that kind of thing, rather than kids all sitting in rows being preached to by the teacher. Well, to be honest, we are, we are creating our own network of schools, so you know we are appealing directly to schools to, to invite us in. So we're not actually looking for any particular government help, and we think the, the, the climate in the country is very positive. You know, head teachers all across the UK are inviting us in to work with their pupils, work with their teachers. So we, you know, in a sense, we don't need. I mean, my background is in education and teaching, so teachers kind of recognise an authentic voice when they hear one. So, so we are finding we don't really need the support so long as we approach teachers in an authentic way. We have an authentic product that teaches authentically. Then, then that's really all you need. Well, I think opening up access to, you know, maybe having a stronger, wider debate about games-based learning, about opening up wider access to Wi-Fi. I mean, schools are still quite shut down in you know, some of the technologies that are available to teachers and pupils, and I think there needs to be a more adult debate around what, what kids have access to, what teachers have access to, in order for, you know, to free up the learning that can happen in a pro properly digital sort of educational community. Yeah, I don't think they necessarily need to be up to date with the technology, but so long as they understand the problems that teachers have and how best, so long as they're listening with an empathic ear to teachers and head teachers and local authorities to say that, look, we need this to be in place for us to properly embrace the digital, um, you know, the digital education, you know, that. Teachers love it, yeah, because te a lot of teachers, particularly in primary schools, are quite, not frightened, but they're, you know, they've been asked to teach programming and coding right from the earliest years, so when, when they hear of a tech company that's willing to come in, give up their time, <laughs> to give up their time, and to, you know, to introduce programming in a, in a very, really fun way, I mean, our game uses massive great robots that kind of march across a landscape and shoot lumps at one another, you know, where the kids are actually using lines of JavaScript to make the robots move. So te particularly primary teachers are loving this because suddenly, you know, the kids recognise the environment of the game, they know how to play the game, and in playing they're learning, 
so the teachers feel much more empowered just to breathe and then have a conversation about, right, okay, what are we learning about JavaScript, what are we learning about programming? Absolutely, yeah, we've had huge, huge positive reactions from teachers who, you know, I mean, we go in sensitively, you know, we're not going in there saying, right, we know you, you sit over there and we'll do the business. You know, we say, right, can we, let's all co-learn together, you know, so, because I'm not a programmer, you know, but I happen to have created a game about language, and it happens to be a programming language, you know, but that, that's, that's the kind of spirit in which this should be done. We'll be right back.